Let's move on to pituitary adenomas. The MRI image displayed here demonstrates a large pituitary adenoma, or macroadenoma. Any of the pituitary cell types can be the source of an adenoma, but tumors of the prolactin-secreting cells are most common. These are known as prolactinomas. Classic findings in these patients include amenorrhea, galactorrhea, or excess milk secretion, low libido, and infertility due to decreased GnRH level. The neurologic exam may reveal bitemporal hemianopia due to impingement on the optic chiasm as the tumor grows upwards. Bitemporal hemianopia means that patients progressively lose their vision starting from the periphery and moving towards the midline. Drugs used to treat this condition include the dopamine agonists bromocryptine or cabergoline. Acromegaly is the condition that results from excess growth hormone in adults after the epiphyseal plates have fused. In children, excess growth hormone causes a condition known as gigantism because the epiphyseal plates are open and linear bone growth can occur. In most patients, high levels of growth hormone are a result of a pituitary adenoma. Notable features of acromegaly include large tongue with deep furrows, deep voice, large hands and feet, gaps between the teeth, and coarse facial features. The patients also develop insulin resistance, and diagnosis often includes measurement of the insulin-like growth factor 1, or IGF-1, levels, which are elevated, and failed suppression of growth hormone after an oral glucose tolerance test. When a pituitary adenoma is the cause of acromegaly, surgical resection is generally performed, followed by administration of octreotide, a somatostatin analog that blocks secretion of growth hormone. It's worth noting that elevated growth hormone levels are not always due to acromegaly or gigantism. High growth hormone is normal in conditions of stress, exercise, and hypoglycemia. Now we're going to cover two conditions that are commonly confused, diabetes insipidus, or DI, and the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion, or SIADH. Both involve ADH, also known as vasopressin. In DI, there is not enough ADH, or it doesn't function properly, and in SIADH, as the name suggests, there is too much ADH. We'll start first with DI. These patients present with complaints of intense thirst and polyuria. Lab testing will show that they cannot concentrate urine. In particular, the urine-specific gravity is less than 1.006, and the serum osmolality is above 290 milliosmoles per liter. In response to a water deprivation test, which means repeated urine testing while preventing the patient from drinking anything, the osmolality of the urine will not increase as would be expected in a normal patient. When the diagnosis of DI has been established by these serum and urine tests, desmopressin, which is a synthetic version of ADH, is given to distinguish central from nephrogenic DI. In central DI, there is inadequate production of ADH, and in nephrogenic DI, there is plenty of ADH production, but the kidneys are not responding to it. The next step is to determine the underlying cause of DI. For central DI, etiologies include a pituitary tumor, head trauma, neurosurgery, and histiocytosis X. Nephrogenic DI can be hereditary, for example, genetic defects in the V2 receptor or aquaporin 2, or acquired, for example, hypercalcemia, lithium toxicity, or demeclocycline toxicity, an ADH antagonist. As far as treatment is concerned, patients with central DI can simply take a synthetic ADH analog, desmopressin because their pathophysiology involves failure of production. Nephrogenic DI, however, is harder to treat, because ADH is present, but the kidneys are non-responsive. So drugs we use to act on the kidney include hydrochlorothiazide, indomethacin, and amylaride. The thiazide and potassium-sparing diuretics reduce sodium reabsorption and increase water loss in the distal regions of the nephron. The resultant hypovolemia induces the body to respond by upregulating sodium and water reabsorption in the proximal nephron, reducing the overall water loss associated with diabetes insipidus. Indomethacin is an NSAID that can be effective in treating acquired forms of nephrogenic DI because prostaglandins inhibit the action of ADH in the kidney. Let's discuss SIADH. Recall that one of the main functions of ADH is to insert aquaporin-2 channels into the collecting duct membrane and enable the reabsorption of water from the renal tubules into the bloodstream. It follows then that too much ADH will result in excessive water retention and hyponatremia from the dilution effect. 
Electrolyte measurements demonstrate urine osmolarity that is greater than serum osmolarity. Hyponatremia is a very worrisome condition that can lead to seizures when it is severe. If the hyponatremia is corrected too rapidly, central pontine myelinolysis can result, which involves severe damage to the myelin sheath of nerve cells in the pons. Symptoms include acute paralysis, dysphagia, dysarthria, and other neurological symptoms. How does the body respond to hyponatremia and volume overload? Aldosterone levels will be lowered as the body tries to maintain near-normal volume status. The most commonly tested subtopic on SIADH besides electrolyte levels is the underlying etiologies. The major causes are CNS secretion of ADH from tumors or trauma, ectopic secretion of ADH frequently from small cell lung cancer, pulmonary disease, and drugs such as cyclophosphamide. The only effective treatments are water restriction and demeclocycline, an ADH antagonist. Hypopituitarism is a condition in which there is undersecretion of all pituitary hormones. Treatment with hormone replacement therapy is necessary. Causes of hypopituitarism include non-secreting pituitary adenoma, craniopharyngioma, Sheehan syndrome, empty cella syndrome, brain injury, and radiation damage. During pregnancy, the anterior pituitary enlarges due to hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the prolactin-producing lactotrophs. There is no concomitant increase in blood supply, however. Thus, in the setting of severe postpartum blood loss, the anterior pituitary is particularly susceptible to ischemia and infarction, leading to Sheehan syndrome. The most common presenting symptom is failure to lactate after delivery due to lack of prolactin.